What's up guys, welcome to the video. I'm using my iPhone as a mic, don't make fun of me, it works great. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be doing some ISO tests. We're gonna be testing the Alexa Mini LF, the new Alexa 35, the Panasonic Vericam, and a Red DSMC2. So if you look out on the internet, there's no shortage of test footage, technical materials, photometric data, etc. All that stuff is out there. Uh, but the important thing I want to look at is the actual practical use of this information. As a working DP, how can you take this technical data and incorporate it into your repertoire to use it for problem solving or creative solutions? Different cameras have different base ISOs. Some cameras function better than others at high ISOs, etc. So that's what we're gonna dig into here. I know the Vericam is maybe not the most common camera that you'll see out there, but what it does for us with this test is allows us to test a camera that has the dual ISO function. So we'll get into that in a minute. And then another cool thing we get to look at is the ES mode on the Alexa 35, the enhanced sensitivity mode. So we'll take a look at the practical application of that as well. And then overall, we'll get to see how these four different sensors pair up against each other. So real quick, before we get into that, let me just explain what we did with this test. To start, we took each camera and shot at its base ISO, which happened to be 800 for all of them. And then we shot a resolution analysis chart and we also captured a human face. Despite the fact that the resolution chart has all these fine details, more often than not, you're gonna be capturing a human face. So I thought it was important to see how that turned out as well. Then we bumped the ISO up one stop from there. In other words, doubling the ISO and then compensating with one stop of ND to keep our exposure the same. Am I and essentially the goal was to look at the image, see how it held up as we pushed the ISO higher and higher. So first, let's take a look at the oldest sensor here. Let's look at the red dragon sensor. Okay, so when we're looking at this chart, what we should expect to see is a super clean image. Again, we're at the base ISO. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We see a clean image, not a ton of noticeable grain. Now let's look at a face. Wow, I shouldn't have cut my hair. Again, looks clean. Let's zoom in here. Still pretty clean. I highly suggest shooting a lower ISO on the DSMC2 red sensors. Really, four or 500 is a sweet spot, but that's just my opinion. Next, let's take a look at the Panasonic Vericam. Same deal, should expect to see a super clean image here. Uh, this image actually looks slightly sharper. That could just be a product of the sensor itself because we're using the same glass. Again, looking at a face here. Looks great, super clean. I love the skin tones on this camera. Zooming in, still super clean. Now let's take a look at the Alexa Mini LF. Again, super clean image here. Just real quick for context, I did a super quick match in Resolve. Uh, just as a baseline, because these sensors have slightly different colors, I just shifted them slightly to get a rough match. Okay, now looking at a face, one thing that really stood out is the amount of detail that this sensor captures. When you look at the beard hairs and the individual hairs on my head, you see so much detail. Now we'll take a look at the Alexa 35. Okay, this is the sensor I'm least familiar with, so let's take a look. Should be relatively similar to the LF, but let's see. Again, super clean image. Let's go ahead and take a look at a face. Same deal. Once again, so much detail on the image, super clean. We're not really seeing any grain, even when we crop in here at 2.5 times. Again, that was just the baseline. Now let's bump it up to 1600 and take a look, starting with the red. The resolution chart actually looking not bad as we crop in. Tiny bit of noise, but again, not bad. Let's take a look at a face. Okay, not too offensive. Okay, as we crop in, we start to see a little bit of noise, a little bit of color inconsistency, perhaps. Uh, not horrible, though. Now let's go to the Vericam. Looks clean in the wide, and then we zoom in. I mean, the grain is almost imperceptible, tiny bit of grain. Let's look at a face. Super clean. Again, I love the skin tones on this camera. Zooming in. 
a tiny, tiny bit of grain, but you really got to look for it. Okay, now to the LF. Resolution chart looks good. Tiny bit of grain, really got to search for it. Uh, looking at a face looks great. We still have that beautiful level of detail. Tiny bit of grain. I notice it as I look at it. When I pause it, I see a little bit of it, but not too bad. On to the 35. Resolution chart looks good good looks pretty good this may be slightly out of focus because it doesn't look incredibly sharp now looking at a face beautiful looks great hard to tell if it's better than the lf just by my eyeballs maybe slightly okay now let's really push it on a 3200 with the red chart doesn't look horrible zooming in though really starting to see a lot of noise noise is really jumping let's look at a face we can start to see the quality of the image start to degrade a little bit let's zoom in yeah so to me this would really be an unusable image i mean in a pinch on a documentary or something maybe and maybe you clean it up and post a bit but to me this is not usable Onto the Varicam. Keeping in mind, we have two base ISOs for the Varicam, 800 and 5,000. So we're still below that second base ISO, so let's keep that in mind. Chart looks okay, zooming in. Still actually looks okay, a little bit of noise. We still have those really smooth skin tones. Doesn't look bad. Zooming in, little bit of noise buzzing around, but really, I don't notice much of a difference with this than the last, than the 1600. Okay, now the LF chart looks okay in the wide. Okay, really starting to see some noise now when we punch in, definitely more than the very cam. Let's look at a face. We still have that nice contrast and uh, the nice detail, but definitely way more noise. I feel like we're losing a little detail in my hair in the dark areas. Now the 35, really curious to see, because this is Ari's first new sensor in a long time. Curious to see how this holds up. Little bit of noise. Looks a little less though than the LF. Okay, looking at a face, this looks great. Yeah, definitely cleaner than the LF. Obviously there is some noise, but still a really clean image, relatively speaking. This is usable, in my opinion. On to 6400 with the red, looking at the chart. Starting to see the noise in the wide here. Yep, moving in. Ton of noise. Doesn't look great. Onto a face. Yep, still seeing noise. Uh, really losing contrast in my hair. Then when we zoom in, again, unusable image. That color inconsistency I was talking about. We see some yellow and some purple in my face, which shouldn't be there. Now onto the very cam. Now very important to note, we're now using the higher base ISO of 5000 as our current base. So even though we're above it, 5000 is our new base ISO. So let's take a look. Chart looks fine. Tiny bit of noise. Very cam is really impressing me today. Let's take a look at a face. Yeah, this looks great. Still have those nice skin tones. Zooming in, tiny bit of noise, but for 6400, this is a great image. Okay, so the Mini LF couldn't go to 6400, so we're gonna leave that one behind for a sec. We're gonna move on to the 35, and we're gonna test 6400 in the regular shooting mode, and then we're gonna test 6400 with the enhanced sensitivity and compare. This is without the ES. Chart looks okay. As we zoom in, we're seeing some noise jumping around. Okay, still have a ton of detail. The image isn't degrading too much, although it looks like we have a little bit of color shift. It looks like it's shifting a little blue-green. Just as a reminder, I applied a lot to all of these cameras just to get the colors a little bit similar. Although the LUT I've applied to this camera has been the same all the way through. So if we do see a color shift, it means it's unique to this camera. As we zoom in, definitely seeing some grain. I have to pause it to really get a good look. Some weird color inconsistencies above my mustache. It gets a little red and green, but not horrible. Okay, now the ES mode. Let's take a look. Hard to tell in the wide shot of the chart. Okay, as we zoom in on the chart, definitely less noise. 
Hard to tell if it's as sharp though. Let's take a look at a face and see. Okay, we have that same slight color shift it looks like. To me, it doesn't look crazy different. It looks like maybe there's a little loss of detail and I don't understand the algorithm of these cameras, but it looks like perhaps they're just running a little internal noise removal. And my guess is that process is taking away a little bit of the sharpness of this image. Did this feature blow me away? No, but definitely nice to have in your back pocket. Okay, like I said at the beginning of the video, I want you guys to think about practical takeaways and applying this to your work rather than just looking at technical data. So let's think about all of the factors and all of the ways in which changing the ISO affects the image. So we saw a little bit of color shift with the 35. We saw it shifted the skin tones. We saw color noise and local color shifts when parts of my skin would get more red or there'd be some purple or yellow in my face and then just noise in general. And then one other thing that stood out to me is sort of the overall sharpness or muddiness of the image. So these are the things that we need to be looking at. Another thing I wanna point out that I've kind of pointed out in some of my other classes, there's no right or wrong choice. You, you gotta think about the story, how do, how do these individual factors help me tell a story a certain way? If you want to grain your image, use a higher ISO. If you want something to look more rough and rugged, maybe you're emulating a, a sort of low budget documentary or something, you might not mind to have some local color inconsistencies. More than anything, I want you, rather than me saying, this is the ISO you should or shouldn't shoot at, I simply hope this video makes you think a little bit more about the individual ways in which ISO affects the image and then also you'll have some specific references for at least these four cameras on what they can handle. Now that you have that, I'll just give some of my personal takeaways. So starting with the red, uh, honestly I wouldn't push it much past 800, maybe 1600 we saw in the test. 1600 actually looked decent. I won't rely on it though. For the Varicam, super impressed with it. Um, honestly, it looked pretty solid all the way through this test. As far as the LF, and this is something I was really interested about because I hadn't shot with the 35 yet. I can conclusively say the 35 image is cleaner than the LF. I wasn't sure if that would be the case because the, the big thing with the 35 was the dynamic range. But on top of that, and perhaps conceptually it's the same thing, it is cleaner at higher ISOs. But anyway, for the LF, clean all the way through 1600. 3200 starts to get a little noisy. And then back to the 35, I would say in a pinch, you could shoot 3200. I might not rely on it, but I was impressed with this camera. And then as far as the enhanced sensitivity mode, I wasn't super impressed by that. I mean, in a pinch, you could maybe use it in a, you know, a night exterior, but hey, do whatever you want. If you like it, use it. So in closing, I just want you to be aware of those factors and hopefully you have a little bit more context with these cameras. And don't be afraid to push the ISO. Just be aware of how it affects the image. Thanks for watching.